Our buddy joining us on the Harbor One Hotline. You hear him here at WEEI. You see him at Nesson. Our pal Andrew Raycroft talking Bruins regression. Foye, Razor, we missed you last week. How was it with your, uh, what did you have, like a a big, uh, to, you had like a big speaking engagement last week or something there, Razor? We were handing out Christmas trees out at Hanscom to the troops. And because of the Army-Navy game, there was some... Uh, Un- some circumstances that came up that that made me delayed. So I absolutely apologize no, for leaving no. you guys hanging. Uh-huh. Uh, it's brutal. I'm a bad guy like that, but uh, it was for a good cause. It wasn't uh, wasn't me just chasing my kids around or something. I was like just that. gonna say nothing screams the Army Navy game than hearing from a Canadian. Mm. <laughs> Very yeah. true. Very true. No, I have an American passport. I am I am full on American. Oh. All right. Oh, so, so you celebrate. They let so, me on the base. Uh, so you will be celebrating Christmas. They let me on the base. You'll be celebrating <laughs> Christmas, right? Yes, and, and it's actually the same day too. Yes. Oh it's, it's wow! So it's different. Yeah. So it's different. It's not like Thanksgiving, which is completely different in in Canada. So Christmas, we're sharing, yeah. and we still we all love the same Santa Claus. We get Thanksgiving. They get Boxing Day. Do you have like a Correct. special? Do you have a special like or the same Christmas? You know, shows still. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, know what you're trying yeah, to say. Well, I you can't have, wait. I want to TVs. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I know you have TVs, but do Canadians basically just bite off all the American Christmas shows, or do you guys have your own like version of uh, you know a Night Before Christmas or the Grinch that stole Christmas? Is it is it instead of a Grinch? Is it like a I don't know, like a moose or some sort of like you know woodland creature that is, <laughs> what is it like? <laughs> It's all the same. Yeah. All it right. It is all the same. Yes, it is all the same. <laughs> so there's, I think what Fourier is driving at is, is like, is there we that? We have Home Alone. Uh, oh, we okay. Have home Alone. Okay. Yeah. But, we but, home alone. but yeah. I didn't know if you had like, uh, and it's funny, I was trying to think of like a Canadian that isn't a professional wrestler that would be famous. Like uh, Ceylon, <laughs> Ceylon Delon from Toronto Centre singing the hits on Christmas Eve yeah. on CBC Canada only, right? Like that's what I... I think that's kind of the road yeah. you're going down. But like, I think it's Celine Dion. Is there a Canadian version of Christmas Story or something like that? I, I, I mean, I haven't been in Canada for Christmas in so long. I, but I don't remember any specific tradition growing up. No, it was like, you know, we had Frosty the Snowman. We had the Charlie <laughs> Brown Christmas. Like, that. That's what, that's what we had. Frosty never melts in Canada, does he? Yeah, no, that's right. Frosty Frosty can live in July in, in most parts of Canada, yes. Well, the Bruins right now, uh, Razor, as we segue right into the Bees, are living without arguably their top center and definitely their top D man. I know that uh I know that there there was some uh, I, there's an IR situation there, and even if it's short term, just in terms of McAvoy and Zaka. Um, how do you think the Bruins have played without each of those guys? Let's start there. Well, I thought their game in New Jersey was awesome. I, I love their defensive structure. I love their compete. I love uh, the New Jersey scores a lot of goals, and, and they there's been talk. You know, we've had a couple stretches here with this team where they gave up a lot of goals in over a three or four game stretch, and uh, so that that was old school Bruins locking it down and. They're going to have to do the same when you when you don't have McAvoy when you don't have Zaka, uh, you you get you basically hang on and hope and and I thought they did a really nice job of that the other night and and it looks like they're going to have to do it through the weekend anyways. Yeah, I was just thinking about it like the way the season started. They win nine of their first ten and it's like oh my god, it, it can it it can't be better than it was last year, but it looked like it was. Now it feels like it's just the whole you know water, you know, naturally finding its own level type of thing. Is that how you see it, right, as far as where they're at now and how they started? Because I think I want to say their last 10 games are 5-5. Five and five. Yeah, no, exactly. Listen, they weren't going to go on the run they were last year. The, the, the beautiful part of that is, is they had their 9-10 game stretch where they went 9-1. and one. And, and essentially every team's going to need that to get into the playoffs by the looks of it. It's, there's so much parity. There's so many teams that are in that 29-point mark in the Eastern Conference all around 500. It, it, they're just a bunch of really good teams this year. No one was able to separate over the summer because of the salary cap. No one could add on players, load up. So everyone's kind of just in the middle. And, and the Bruins getting that 10-game that stretch at the start of the season, 
it allows them to be in the playoffs. They're, they're still got, like, yeah, they're mid, they, okay, they're five and five, but they have the second most points in the NHL. They have the second best winning percentage in the NHL right now. So it, 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 it kind of feels like that, but because of the start, everyone else in the league going 500, they're in a really good place and they can afford to, and, and every team's going to have to deal with these injuries as well. So if they just kind of hold level like they did, getting points on, in New Jersey, a tough place. They find ways to get points tonight and tomorrow night. They're in a really, really good spot in this league because it's so close. It's so hard. Every team is losing games every, you know, every week. Andrew Raycroft of Nesson and WEEI here with Gresham Fourier breaking down some Bruins with us. Razor, I saw on your Twitter that with that New Jersey game was the first game a defenseman did not register a point. Is that correct? And if so, how should we just normal hockey folk or those who don't really know that much about hockey interpret that? Well, it, I, everything on Twitter is 100% true. Yes. So we'll start with that. So, yes, that is it is correct. Everything that goes on Twitter is, is true. That's right. It, it, it's more coincidental, I think. I, I've had that. We, Billy and I, Jaffe and I saw that stat maybe a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. And we're like, wait, and, and it continued, you know, like so Forbert would get an assist or McAvoy would end up getting a goal. It, it was it's just a crazy number. Um, I think it's more coincidental because they're certainly not the highest scoring defensemen. They don't get, you know, they, they don't have uh, an Eric Carlson who's going to get 110 points back there. So, so mostly just kind of a, a random interesting stat that they went 27 straight games by getting points on the back end. It's very interesting. Hey, Razor, what is, uh, based on the, the, the early part of the season, is there, w- would there be anything that you would change um, as far as what Jim Montgomery is doing? Would, any critiques, any advice, or do you like the way he's handling things so far? No, I, I like – I really like his uh, – I like him – I've, I've liked his – line combinations i like his in-game ability to have feel he's done such a good job of that since the start of last season uh really recognizing who's going who's not and and making the lines accordingly uh i like his demeanor a bit more this year i I don't think he's quite as happy all the time i I think he's recognizes that they need the, the the whip cracked a little bit more with some of the younger players and and, and not allowing them to, to get out of the culture that this team has and get out of them playing well on a, on a nightly basis. So, so far, I think he's, he's done a really good job with this team. And, and again, that's why they have the second most points in the NHL right now. How good can Geeky be? I, I'm not sure. We, we just, it's funny, he's, he's just that one of those players. And, and I thought about it the other night. He's kind of like Charlie Coyle. And, and, and in that he can do a lot of really good things, but you're not really going to notice him. And he can win a bunch of wall battles. He's big. He's strong. He does everything pretty well, but nothing spectacular that he stands out in. Uh, so, and, and we saw that. Charlie he jumped up in the lineup a little more. He scores a goal. So I think it's kind of dependent on where he plays, what kind of a player he is. And, and it just kind of reminded me of, of Charlie Coyle a little bit and where he is in the lineup. He always gets the job done. But if he's a little lower in the lineup, it's going to look differently than when he gets moved up. So hopefully for his sake, he did score 20 goals last season in the National Hockey League. So if he's up in the lineup here, like it appears to be again tonight, you'll want to see him chip in. And, and I think he might have the ability to do that. It's, it's, um, it was a good for him to see him score the other night. And if he can get on a bit of roll and, and really add depth in the center position for this team, then, then they're ahead of the game again. All right, I got two things for you that are on the negative side of things that I, that to me need to be fixed. One of them is closing out one goal games with the goalie pulled. Am I freaking out over that for no reason, or do the Bruins have an issue closing out when things are good? No, they're they're by far lead the league in goals against that six on five seven. I, the other team, Montreal, was at four last time I looked. So that's a huge difference. That's you know you're you're doubling everyone else in the National Hockey League. That's a problem, and it, and the issue with it is it feels like it's turned into a little bit of a mental thing where they need to kill a couple of those at the end of the game and get away with that six on five at the end of the game just to feel good about it because again it, it it's it's still really hard to score goals and it shouldn't be that prolific for the op- the opponent to be scoring on the Bruins six on five like that. And of course it goes back to game seven last season. So uh, yeah, it, it's something I, 
the concern, like it, it, they should be able to fix it. But until they do, yeah, we can we can be a little concerned about that and not feel great when they're only up a goal and, and six on five face off in their zone. They, they haven't proven that it's an automatic uh, win. And I know this is in overtime, it gets wonky because you got less guys on the ice. However, in the third periods, it feels like the Bruins have a little bit of an issue, especially against teams that can really skate like New Jersey of the old odd man rushes. Are the Bruins getting better at that? I know we talked about it earlier this year. Have they kind of cleaned that up because, or was that maybe just a New Jersey thing where I felt like there were a lot of either two on one or three on two situations, especially late. Yeah. I, um, yeah, they, 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 it's been better. Uh, but they still have a ways to go, especially against the New Jerseys, the New Yorks, the, the higher end skill team list. You're going to give a few up just because of the way they play and the pace that they play at. Um, so, so no, but it, it can be better. Absolutely. It, it has gotten better. Um, cause when they play the Phoenixes, the Arizonas, I should say, they're not giving any up when they're playing those lesser teams. I think they've cleaned that up, which they weren't at the start of the season. Now it's just a matter of these higher end teams limiting their opportunities just a little bit. Yeah, you know, Rays are totally kind of off like uh, the hockey game right now. I I just saw this whole Bruins Centennial team, and I just looking for Andrew Raycroft, and I I I went to the end and I didn't see you on there. Wait, you're not you're not you didn't make this team. And who's I didn't I did. I didn't have – I, sh- I needed to be here another year or two. I-, I needed a few more games to get in the mix. Um, and, yeah, not to, and, not to, and not to be it's critical, who's – first of yeah. all, uh, is it fair to put somebody who played in 1938 on this team? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, can't find – Tim Thomas can't jump years. in there? Can't but put it, Tim it, Thomas it, it, on there? I think – I do think I'm better than those guys. I, I bet I was better than whoever that I bet that you, you would is. start over Frank Briz, 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 Brimsek, <laughs> Brimsek, Jerry, uh, Gary Cheevers. Jerry, Jerry Cheevers. <laughs> you can't do that to Jerry Cheevers. You got to know Jerry Cheevers. That, that, that I'm not better than. I'm not even close to Cheevers. All right, well, He's I, a Hall listen. of Famer. I'm, I'm saying, but, but you can definitely start a petition for me, Fourier, right. and uh, maybe maybe I'll get at it. Fourier, what in the Johnny Pie McKenzie are you doing over there? I'm just saying. I was like, wow. I was like, oh, I'm curious. Why not? Uh, when you look at the guy, the best goalies to ever play the game, what's the number one attribute those guys have to have? Competitiveness, uh, absolute assassin like competitiveness to. To want to be the best and win every day. Tom Brady, it's the same as all athletes, whoever the best are. Michael Jordan, uh, you, especially as a goaltender, you can change the game. And, and if you have that mentality every single day where you really don't care about anybody else but winning, then those guys are usually the best. Oh, man. <laughs> Four years. And I obviously didn't have enough of that. Four oh, eight. that's not true. No, no. Listen, you, you did. You had it. <laughs> Foyer stole the whole thing. I didn't even hear your answer. I just know that you defend. Like I, I'm just I'm blown Gary away right Cheevers, now. Gary Cheevers, he's a great player. Gary Cheevers, that's Gary Cheevers. Cheevers. You gotta get that one oh, right. Oh man, even- he's Gary to me. Hey, I call him Gary. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> We're so close. <laughs> oh, uh, Razor, thanks for the hard. time, buddy. Great breakdown. We appreciate you. We'll uh, catch you next, next week. week. Last time. Oh no, we won't talk to you next week. Oh wait, we will. That's right. Oh, actually, I will. You 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 tell me. Yeah, you'll be here. You'll you'll be here. You'll be here. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Don't worry about it. Where are you going? He doesn't even know. I do know. I do know exactly where I'm going. You don't even know what day you're off, Gary. I'm off. uh, (laughs) Gary's kind of a weird name too, though. That's that's a whole other issue. If you if you name your child Gary, here we go. Now we're now big deal or no big deal. Here comes Razor. Big deal or no big deal for Jockich. Men that spell their name name G E R R Y and go by Gary. (laughs) There we go. It's like Dick from Richard. Yeah. Well, in a way. Hey, hey, Razor. Do you think you could beat up Bruce Lee? Oh, God. No, of course not. Okay, Razor. Fourier blurted out the other day, and he moved the goalpost numerous times. The original comment was, most people (laughs) could probably kick Bruce Lee's ass. (laughs) Why would you say that? Well, listen, listen, 
Uh, I misspoke. The guy would put you in, a, in a neck hole no, or something like before you yes, even knew it. Razor, he's 130 pounds, and I changed uh, it to make it make more sense because I, I was shooting from the hip a little bit. And a, a, a today, an MMA fighter at the same weight class, if uh, Bruce Lee in his prime jumped into the octagon against would Sean get, O'Malley, would get beat up. Mm-hmm. He would lose. That is that is that that's the real question. Well, they but the MMA guys are trained the same way as Bruce Lee. So, no, so yeah, they might have no, they're to not. They don't. They, they they Bruce Lee never <laughs> shot on somebody oh, on. and tried to wrestle him to the ground. Hold on. I know, uh, but they. But but I'm saying the, the MMA guys would have the jujitsu or the karate skills yeah. that Bruce Lee would have. Yes. So they would be able to. But if you would put them in a ring against just a boxer, they would know you get put in a leg lock and you'd be done. There you go. Right? Yeah, and and that's where it started on the most people probably could. <laughs> then it moved to <laughs> MMA people and stuff like that. <laughs> now Foyer also, <laughs> when UFC was in town, uh, Razor. <laughs> Foyer also said about that bantamweight title fight between two I guys. I remember this. Oh yeah, the whole oh I, I could to this I, I could I, kick I, their I laughed ass. the whole time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. It, well, like that has to happen. It has <laughs> to happen. Foyer has to get in the octagon with a hundred and twenty pound bantamweight and see what happens. It would be. That's like a great experiment. You and I would be there front row. You and I would oh. be the commentators be a, for that. Oh, no, the corner man. No, we'll be the corner guy. I don't know. We'll He's going to get busted gonna, up. I don't want to patch know. him up. I don't know if I would him. I don't guy. I don't know <laughs> yeah, if I would right. make it to the corner after the first. <laughs> I don't know if that no you guys would, you guys may have to roll me on to some sort of like gurney and like Honestly, wheel me that, out of there. That's 100% right. Like, that's the biggest thing is the conditioning. You wouldn't make it no, five minutes. No, like, I wouldn't. That, you, would, you would have a heart attack before he knocked 30 you out. That would be the issue. Listen, I did this thing. I want, I'm, I'll challenge you to this, Razor, I'm a, uh, and I'll check in with you when I come back. I did this thing where I just, like, I just was just hanging from a bar, right, at the gym. Yeah. Just And I see, I'm going to see how long I can just hang from a bar. <laughs> I My kids were like a minute 30, minute 44. 31 seconds is as long as I could go before I had to. my feet had to touch the ground. I was like, one, I'm weak as hell. Two, I'm obviously overweight. But that's harder than yeah. you think. It's hard. Just hanging from a bar. See how long you can do it, Razor. Try to beat my record. Uh, I will, 31 seconds. I'll, I am definitely beating 31 seconds. But I would, yeah, that's, there's random things like that that shouldn't be hard but are hard when you're kind of old. Right? I can't do it. Like, can you do a full sit-up yeah. with somebody not holding your knees? <laughs> yeah, I, I could do one or two right now, but yeah, my knees always I go up. To... I can't do it. Yeah, well, you, you got a, you, you've got a lot of mass too. I know. I, uh, I would I the, that... only, the only thing that I can think of, <laughs> Razor, is that while Fourier would be uh, hanging from a bar, wondering how long <laughs> ours would be, <laughs> how cave, long? Man. Yeah, ours would be. <laughs> how long will we not? How long could we make it not falling off? The bar stool. There you go. Now, I got the rail to hang on to, so I know I can go 30 seconds if I'm hammered holding on to that rail. I might uh, I might topple over after that, but that's what I. That's the road I thought he was going down, Razor. No, how, no. Uh, how electric can you be and still hold on to your seat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Razor. Great, great, great job, buddy. I'll talk to you next week, Razor. Right, Thank thanks, you. Thanks, man.